Hello everyone, new and returning users. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Raquel Martin. I am a licensed clinical psychologist, professor, and scientist. And today I'm gonna to be discussing signs that you may suffer from Dr. Shane. Dr. Martin here. So in this video, I discuss the background of toxic shame and contributors to the development of toxic shame. And today I'm going to discuss signs that you may suffer from toxic shame. So just a little background, just in case you didn't watch the previous video, toxic shame involves consistent feelings of worthlessness and inadequacy, and it lasts for a significant amount of time. And there are a lot of ways that it can manifest overall. Uh, the biggest way to recognize toxic shame within yourself, is the negative internal dialogue, like negative automatic thoughts. That's a hallmark of toxic shame. You have a scenario and you make a mistake, a big mistake, a little mistake, uh, otherwise, you know, medium mistake anyway. But after the fact, after the apology, after the possibility of you receiving forgiveness, after even taking accountability, and even after everyone has moved on, you have it. And you're not having feelings of remorse regarding the action, regarding that mistake, which is def the definition of guilt, like feeling poorly about an action or a behavior. You instead are having negative feelings about yourself, about who you are as a person. You are questioning your value. And that's the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt refers to an action, shame refers to you. And when it comes to the toxic aspect of the shame, you may have thoughts cross your mind like, I am a bad person, I am worthless, I don't deserve nice things because I may ruin them. And this aspect of toxic shame can really be tied to the way mistakes were addressed with you as a child because the development of toxic shame, we're pretty vulnerable to these kind of things being embedded in ourselves when we're children. Um, that's when we're learning and developing and growing at the most salient and quickest rate right? Um, so how someone responds to the way or responded to the way you made mistakes as a child can really be an indicator of how shame or empowerment or compassion or guilt has been embedded in you. So let me give you an example. Were you shamed early on in life and often? That becomes ingrained in you at a point. You make a mistake um, and you eventually become a person who no one else puts you down quicker than you. When you made a mistake, did adults in your life address the mistake by acknowledging the fact that everyone makes mistakes? Mistakes are normal, normalizing that experience for you, providing you with opportunities to like practice and learn and grow from that and also help you with accountability because there's a balance between um, grace and lack of accountability. And I want you to be accountable for your actions, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that mistakes are normal. And if you're not making mistakes, you're not learning, right? Or did they scream at you? Did they cuss at you? make you feel bad about yourself, compare you to your siblings or other family members, you always make mistakes. Why can't you be more like your sister? Did they attribute the mistake to your actions or did they make you feel like not only the issue was your actions, but you? It's not just what you did was bad, you are bad. So you inherently start to feel bad about yourself and then it keeps happening and now you feel that way all the time. That is toxic shame. Overall, that's where a lot of times it can develop from. Another sign of toxic shame is lashing out at others and also struggling to express your anger in a healthy manner. Because here's the thing, there is nothing wrong with anger. There's nothing wrong with anger or any emotions for that matter. Um, anger isn't good or bad, it just is. Our anger tells us just as much about ourselves and our response to an, a, an event or a person or a place or a thing as happiness does. In relation to toxic shame though, feelings of anger can arise and be directed towards yourself with like negative self-talk, invalidating your feelings, possible self-sabotage, whether you're aware of it or not. And anger can also be directed outward by lashing out at others, pushing people away, or even like having reactions to situations that you may identify later down the line as like greater than the context may have asked for. Like after that scenario happened, after you shouted at that person or kicked them out, you, have a, you may have a moment like, you know what it never was? that serious. It was never that serious. Where did that come from? I wasn't even that angry to begin with. And now I truly feel like my response was greater than what was warranted. 
and that anger, that low frustration tolerance is a d direct result of the humiliation or the pain that you felt connected to that shame. Anger is often described as a secondary emotion. And in this situation, the primary emotion was shame. I want you to think of an iceberg. Like when you think of the Titanic, the Titanic did not sink because of what was above the water. They thought they could swerve around it and they were wrong because of what was below the water. When you think of that, when you think of anger, anger is typically above the water, but it's secondary. Below the water in this situation is shame and humiliation. Toxic shame can also manifest through perfectionism and unrealistic expectation. Nothing is ever good enough because you were consistently told that you weren't good enough. You want things to be perfect so that you can finally get the props that you deserve from possibly anyone, from your colleague, or even from the person that consistently degraded and shamed you your whole life. If you get it down just right, maybe they will tell you that you're worthy. But that's not gonna happen because your healing can't hinge on them and what the issue is is them. If you were consistently attacked or made to feel bad about yourself when you made mistakes, you're gonna try your hardest to never make a mistake because it creates some form of like paralyzing fear within you and you wanna avoid that at all costs. You wanna protect yourself from that. And finally, toxic shame can manifest, can manifest, manifest, can manifest as withdrawal and also like avoidance from people, places and things, anything. If you have a negative sense of self, if you don't feel adequate, if your thoughts are constantly negative, then you're going to have a difficult time engaging with people because you don't feel comfortable in your own skin. You can also struggle with intimacy because relationships are give and take and naturally the intimacy will increase over time. You're going to go from asking somebody what their middle name is and their favorite soda is to attempting to learn about their innermost thoughts. And that may bring up things that you're not ready to address. So you may push people away. Toxic shame, um, un address issues or an open wound. Someone trying to talk to you about it, whether they are trying to just to get to know you better or whether they are intentionally trying to be harmful or not, it's gonna pour salt and it's gonna poke it. And you're gonna, your knee jerk reaction when someone pokes something that hurts is to push them away. Also, if you have a fear of being wrong and making mistakes, you're likely gonna avoid new experiences. That's another aspect of withdrawal because it's not possible to be good at everything. And instead of placing value in the effort that you put forth for that enjoyment that you may get from a new hobby or a new activity, um, toxic shame has convinced you that if you can't do it perfectly, it's not worth doing it, which is going to put a cap on your joy. That, those are some really like important key points. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. I hope this information was helpful for you and it provided you with some insight into what may possibly be going on with you or a friend or a family member. Um, thank you for watching all the way. It truly helps. Um, and tune into the next video in this series where I will discuss ways to address toxic shame and hopefully extinguish it. If you have any more questions about toxic shame, please comment below. If you want to see an in-depth video about any other mental health com um, topics, please feel free to comment below. This entire series started because I posted a video on Instagram and people were like, we want more. So here we are. If you would like to learn more about me and my day to day, tune into my Instagram or my TikTok at Raquel Martin PhD. Um, that's also where I post some like shorter videos to kind of test out the waters to see if you want to hear more about topics. So that's a great way to push the button to say, I want to hear more about this. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and be kind to yourself.